Stormy O'Mardian, and I'm speaking today from my book, The Power of a Praying Husband. This is episode one, Pray to Understand Your Power and Authority in Prayer. Now, first of all, I want you to know that in my book, The Power of a Praying Husband, it was never my intention to tell you what to do. It was always to share with you your wife's greatest needs and how she wants you to pray for her. The reason I know this goes back to when I wrote The Power of a Praying Wife. And husbands started asking me if I would write The Power of a Praying Husband. And I said, would you read it if I did? And they said, yes, absolutely. We just don't know where to start. So I decided that since I was speaking often all over the country to praying wives, I would take a survey wherever I went to see how they would like their husbands to pray for them. And the response was so great. The wives were eager to do that. This book is the result of that personal survey. I heard from hundreds of women, and the amazing thing about that is the results were the same in every city and state I travel to. I'll explain more about that later. The thing you need to remember, first of all, is that the power of a praying husband is not a means of gaining control over your wife. We all know that never really happens anyway. That's because God doesn't want us controlling other people. He wants us to let him guide us. When we humble ourselves before God and let him lead us, then he can work through us. God wants to work through you as an instrument of his power as you intercede for your wife. The power in your prayer is God's. And when you pray for your wife, you are inviting God to exercise his power in her life. Your prayer enables her to better hear God's voice and respond to God's leading. In spite of that, however, God will never override a person's strong will. If anyone is determined to live outside of God's will, he will let that person do it. So although your prayers have the potential to be powerful in your wife's life, there is a limit to what they can accomplish if her will or your will is opposed to the will of God. The Bible says that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That's from 1 John 5.14. God wants us to pray about all things, but he wants us to pray according to his will. That's why it's important to ask God to reveal his will to you and help you pray accordingly. And once you have the mind of God as to how to pray for your wife, it's easier to pray fervently and persistently just as we can't force our spouses to do what we want them to do, we can't force God to do our bidding either. It's His will, not ours, that will be done. Your spiritual authority with regard to your wife and family is unequaled. Because your spiritual authority comes from God, it must be used the way God intended. It must be motivated by his love. God wants you to serve him by exerting your authority over the enemy. The Bible says that you have been given authority over all the power of the enemy. It says that in Luke 10, 19. And you can devastate his plans on your wife's behalf. If you see the enemy creeping into your marriage in any way, you can stand up and boldly declare, I will not allow the enemy to drive a wedge between me and my wife. I will not allow miscommunication to rule in our relationship. 
I will not permit the mistakes of our past, even yesterday's, to control our future. And then pray, pray, pray. Because when you pray, no weapon formed against you or her will prosper. It says that in Isaiah 54, 17. The Bible says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That's Proverbs 18.22. There are certain blessings God has for you just because you're married. That's because God has declared the two of you to be one in his sight. That's Matthew 19.4-6. through 6. So what happens to one of you will affect the other. If she's happy, you will be happy. If you are blessed, she will be blessed. And of course, the reverse is also true. Her problems are your problems, just as your problems are hers. That's why your prayers for her are so crucial. They will affect you both. Whatever you don't pray about in your life, you leave up to chance. And that's not good enough when it comes to your marriage. The problem with chance in a marriage is Chances are there will be some difficult times. Chances are there will be disagreements. Chances are there will be misunderstandings and hurts. Chances are there will be selfishness and hardness of heart. That's because we are, after all, human. But if we leave the outcome of these things up to chance, we will wind up in trouble down the line. However, all of these things can be turned around through prayer. If busyness, workaholism, unforgiveness, strife, child-rearing, careers, separate interests, boredom, or miscommunication have crept in between you and your wife, God can work through your prayers to bring down the wall that separates you, melt the armor that has been put on, for self-protection and mold you together in unity. He can give you a vision of hope for how God can redeem, restore, and make things right. Praying for your wife will not only soften her heart, but it will also soften yours as well. You don't ever have to slip into marital deadness Misery or divorce don't ever have to be your only two options. No matter what has happened between you, God can make it right. He is the God of wholeness and restoration. He has given you both the power and the authority you need to pray effectively. I learned from my survey that the number one thing nearly every woman wants to hear, the thing that will make her feel more loved than anything else, is I'm praying for you today. Whenever a wife hears that her husband is praying for her, it makes her feel loved and protected. It makes her believe she's important to him. If you want to see God soften your wife's heart or make things right between you, or enrich your life together, or cause your marriage to run more smoothly, then pray for her. In the book, there are 21 chapters, with each chapter focusing on one area of prayer in a way I hope will be enlightening and encouraging and motivating to you. But don't be overwhelmed by the many ways to pray for your wife. In these four videos, I am giving you just a few of the ways to pray so you can see how doable this is, and the results can be life-changing. The prayers I have suggested are a starting point to which you can add the specific needs you and your wife have. Keep praying and you'll see God answer. And don't worry about how the answers will be manifested. You don't have to make them happen. It's your job to pray. It's God's work to answer. Trust Him to do His work in His way and in His time. The good thing about prayer, or the problem with prayer, depending on your perspective, is that we have to go to God to do it. This means we can't get away with anything. It means that any negative thoughts, bad attitudes, hardness of heart, or selfish motives 
are going to be revealed by the Lord. Fervent and honest prayer causes the depths of our hearts to be exposed. That can be uncomfortable. And if there's one thing I have learned about prayer, it's that if we have any unforgiveness, bitterness, pride, anger, irritation, or resentment in our hearts, our prayers will not be answered. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Psalm 66, 18. Our hearts have to be right when we pray. We all, men and women alike, jeopardize our own prayers when we don't pray them from a right heart. God says that when you and your wife were married, you became one flesh. That says that in Genesis 2.24. That feels possible when we start out. There's the anticipation of oneness in that first moment when you sense that you were destined to be more than friends. There's the sense of oneness in the courtship, the promise of oneness in the engagement period, the declaration of oneness in the wedding vows, and the thrill of oneness on the honeymoon, the excitement of oneness as a home is established. And then somewhere along the way, the oneness gets eroded by a subtle separateness. How does that happen? The answer is the world creeps in, along with raising children, pursuing careers, and dealing with the busyness of life. We begin to find more fascination or distraction in it than we do in our mates. Our flesh takes over when we decide to be self-centered instead of self-sacrificing. But you, my dear brother, have been given the power and authority to put a stop to this through your prayers. When you pray heartfelt prayers for your wife, it keeps the world at bay. It transforms any selfishness in either of your hearts toward one another. In the Bible, God commands us all to be of one mind, have compassion for one another, to be loving, tender-hearted, and courteous. That's from 1 Peter 3, 8. Paying heed to these five directives can change your life and your marriage. It's definitely something well worth praying about. First, be of one mind. You know, it's horrible to have strife in a marriage. It makes us miserable. It affects every area of our lives. And it's probably the closest thing to hell we'll ever know on earth. If it goes on long enough, it can destroy everything. Jesus said every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. That's from Matthew 12, 25. Those are frightening predictions, but prayer is the key by which unity in the marriage relationship can be maintained. If you can think of anything that has caused division between you and your wife, pray specifically about that. Ask God to change your heart where necessary to bring you into unity with your wife. Where your wife's attitude and perspective need to change, pray for her to be able to change. Your marriage will be a strong force for good if the two of you are of one mind. Second, be compassionate. Have you ever seen your wife suffering, but you don't know what to do about it? Some men become impatient with that. Others feel so at a loss or overwhelmed by it that it causes them to withdraw. If you recognize that happening to you, ask God to give you a heart of compassion. To be compassionate toward your wife is to have a deep sympathy for any area in which she suffers and to have a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. Part of being compassionate has to do with simply listening. That means being able to listen without having that faraway look in your eyes that says, I have more important things to do. Let's get this over with quickly. Your wife is not expecting you to fix everything. She just needs to know that you hear her heart and care about how she feels. Third, be loving. Jesus loves us with fidelity, 
purity, constancy, and passion, no matter how imperfect we are. A man must love his wife in that same way. You have no idea how much your love means to your wife. Don't withhold it from her, or one way or another you will lose her. The Bible says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. That's Proverbs 3.27. Ask God to fill your heart with love for your wife and enable you to communicate it in a way that makes her feel beautiful. Fourth, be tenderhearted. Is there anything about your wife that bothers you? Is there something that she does or says or doesn't do or say that irritates you? Do you find yourself wanting to change something about her? What happens when you try to make those changes occur? How does she respond when you show irritation? Have you ever just given up and said, it's no use, she's never going to be any different? Well, the truth is, we all have a hard time changing. Try as we may, we can't change ourselves in any significant way. Only God can make changes in us that last. His power can transform us. So rather than be impatient with your wife's weaknesses, ask God to give you a tender heart so you can pray for her about them. And fifth, be courteous. Marriage is hard enough without one of the parties being rude, cruel, or inconsiderate. Nothing makes a marriage feel more like hell on earth, and nothing is more upsetting, defeating, tormenting, suffocating, or emotion-provoking. Nothing does more to bring out the worst in us than a marriage where one of the partners is lacking in common courtesy. Prayer can change that when you both pray together. Would you consider praying something like this? Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Show me where my attitude and thoughts are not what you would have them to be, especially toward my wife. If there is behavior in me that needs to change, enable me to make changes that last. Show me how to really cover my wife in prayer. Renew our love for one another. Heal any wounds that have caused a rift between us. Give me patience, understanding, and compassion. Help me to be loving, tender-hearted, and courteous to her, just as you ask of me in your word. Bring us to a new place of unity with one another. Make us to be of the same mind. Give me words that heal and not wound. Fill my heart with your love so that what overflows through my speech will be words that build up and not tear down. Help me to be everything you created me to be. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now remember, it's not the words you speak. It's the power of God behind them that will make the difference. Praying first before you talk about a sensitive subject will give your words power and ensure that you speak them from a right heart. Your wife will be your greatest asset if you value and honor her. Pray for God to help you speak to your wife in a way that is pleasing in His sight.